Hi, I'm going to have a hands-on look at the ISABUS virtual terminal standard, which is used for farming, military and shipping user interfaces. Now, here is the standard and a lot of it is drivel, but the key information you want is the object definitions and the macro and command definitions and you are going to want to look at the relationships between the objects. So here in this table, we have the hierarchical relationships of objects, which shows us which objects are allowed within other objects. So here we have a data mask object. Now data mask is just jargon for a page or a view. And within the page or view, you can have a container, working set object, button object, input, and so forth. So let's have a look at an object definition to see what the standard is all about. If we go to the data mask object, here is the key table. And this is detailing all the attributes for this object. So we have a ID, we have the type, and we have background color, soft key mask. So the soft key mask is the jargon for keys that normally display on the right, left, or bottom hand side of the screen. And it's basically a menu. And then inside the data mask or page, you have a bunch of child objects and you list the object ID and their, their X and Y locations. And then you also have something called macros, which I will get onto later. Let's have a look at another object definition, a meter object. So again, the standard details, all of the attributes and what they apply to. It's got the object ID, width, needle color, border color, arc and tick color, various options. All that this table is doing is it's defining how to serialize and deserialize the attributes of this widget. Here we've got some examples of representations. The beauty of using a standard is that you can lean on the work of others. So I'm going to have a look at a project by someone for creating user interfaces. So here is the repo for the project by this gentleman. It's a Paul Edit XML graphical user interface editor for creating ISOBUS object pools. And this is what it looks like. If we um, git clone this, and then if we run it, so here we have a example we have a working set which is like the application and then within the working set you have screens here we have a data mask and within this we have a soft key mask which is their jargon for a menu basically we have all these various widgets that you can use to make up the user interface you want so on this page we've got various meter widgets and all of these numbers are actual labels so they're strings now the project has a few other examples we can look at so here's a sprayer. So when we before looked at the standard, there was something called macros. So let's look at what a macro is. It's easier to see in this, this GUI. So the beauty of a macro is you can put a command into the user interface. So for example, you could put a command into this menu button widget so that when you press that menu button, button the macro gets executed and for the macro you could have for example change the page so when you press the menu the macro that you apply to that button changes the page and there's various commands so you have uh, hide and show object enable disable object and so forth that's a very powerful aspect of the standard which 
enables you to create some of the user interface functionality without even writing back-end code. You can do simple actions on the user interface merely by using these macros. For example, you might want to clear a form. So you could have a button that says clear, or you have the next arrow, which makes the user interface go to the next page and so forth. There's a basic palette of widgets from which you use to build up your user interface. So we have bitmap pictures, we have meters, bar line graph, an arched graph, rectangles, ellipses, polygon. By being creative, you can create a reasonably rich user interface which serves your needs. So here is the uh, very simple user interface that I'm going to be working with. So I have two pages, sensor A with a dial and sensor B with a dial, and each one has a soft key mask or menu with the same two buttons, previous and next. You can save and export format you export to is XML. So here's the XML representation. To serialize that in a form that you can then use with hardware, if you go back to this gentleman's repo, there is a pull edit parser a parser for reading pull edit XML files and writing binary isobus object pools. It's a command line function that will take a XML file and output a binary block that you can then use in your project. We want the XML file, the output file, the dimension, and this dimension will be the width of your hardware, so in pixels. So if the ISOBUS terminal that your user interface is going to be displayed on is 240 pixels as miners, then that's what we put there. And the soft key width and the soft key height is the width and height of the buttons that we see here in this example. I've got my XML input file, the name of the output file, and then I want the dimension, the software key width, height, and then I want to put the table flag that will output a C array of the serialized objects. So here we have a summary of what we've got. And here we have a structure of all the bytes. And they're nicely aligned in terms of each serialized object. So this is what will be used in your code. Either you will deliver it to a ISOBUS terminal via the CAN bus line. You will use the transport protocol or the extended transport protocol to deliver this packet of serialized data. Or alternatively, if you're interested in making an actual terminal and using the standard to speed up user interface development, as I am, then you will just include this into your project. Now, the standard isn't perfect, and one of the complications that I came across is that transparency is written into the standard, and some of the widgets do not even have a background attribute, which means the only way to uh, render true the design is to refresh the page completely, so draw every object as per their positioning on the page. And that is not possible with hardware that has limited resources. So I deviated slightly from the standard in order to do more efficient updates of the page. So I added a background to the needle of the meter widget. That means that when I need to do a update to the meter widget. I don't have to re-render the whole page. I just have to 
redraw the background of the meter widget and then draw the new position of the needle on the meter. Okay, so I'm just going to run through the code that I've got that implements part of the ISOBUS standard. Here I have my library, and what I've basically got is for each of the widgets that I have implemented, I've created a strut as per the definition in the standard. So here I've got the meter strut, and it is merely copying what is in this table. So we have object ID, type width, needle color, border color, arc, tick color, etc, etc. Then there's a set of functions which are needed. So loading the widget from the byte data, dumping the widget to a byte array, drawing the widget, freeing the memory assigned to the widget, and then up dating an attribute of the strut as per the standard and that is the same for all the other widget what i am doing is i am reading the byte array of the serialized isobus widgets and i am deserializing each one of those widgets and i am putting it into a hash array when i come to render the user interface I am getting the pointer to the data mask object and then I am drawing the data mask all the draw is doing is it's filling the screen with the background color and then it's going through each of the children objects and drawing them at their appropriate location and each of those children objects might themselves have their own children objects. I am also assigning event listeners. And so for each one of those keys, I am registering an event listener. And then I've got a function that checks to see if a touch event is within the bounds of a registered event a listener, and then it will call any macro that is associated to that event listener. So if I now pull up the project that uses this library, I have some definitions for the display screen, touch screen, and then I have the object pool copy and pasted. And then in my setup, I set up the display, initialize my implementation of part of the ISOBUS standard, and then I initialize a touchscreen library. And then in my loop, I am checking to see if there is a touch event. And then finally, I'm doing any new renders that are needed to the display. So here I have the ISOBUS user interface rendered on my display. As I'm changing the potentiometer, we can see that the needle is moving on the dial. So each time there's a new ADC reading from the potentiometer, I'm filling a circle to cover up any previous renders of the needle, and then I'm drawing the new position of the needle. Here at the bottom, we have the soft key mask and the keys, and each of the keys has assigned to it a macro, and I have set up an event listener to the area of the key, and if the key has a macro assigned to it, that macro will be executed. So the macro command assigned to each one of these keys is to change the page. So when I press next, a macro is executed that changes this page. So when I change the second potentiometer, we see the second dial moving. And then same as before, this key here that has the text prev on it has an event listener. So when I press on the key, the macro that is assigned to this key widget changes this screen. So when I press prev, it goes to the 
previous page where, and you can see that the dial is in a different position. And each time I'm pressing this, I'm re-rendering the whole screen. That's why there's that slight delay. In conclusion, this part of the ISPOS standard is quite sizable and needs careful consideration when implementing. However, using a framework to make user interfaces greatly speeds up development time and it is something worth considering to pursue.